In Nigeria, the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria owns and manages 22 public airports of the 41 private and public terminals spread across the country. To bridge the infrastructure gap at some of the terminals, the federal government says concessioning is the way to go and is also given the option of a private-public partnership. At a recent fan conference on airport development, the Minister of Aviation attempted to woo investors, saying the airports are open for business, especially with the introduction of free trade zones in Lagos and Abuja. This is our focus on the program. Plus, Nigeria's blocked fund rises to $450 million. That's coming from the International Air Transport Association. Airlines blocked funds are foreign airlines unremitted revenues left with the Central Bank of Nigeria. That's our preview for the program. Let's get started. For a country the size of Nigeria with a huge traveling population, the Muritala Mohamed International Airport Lagos, Nigeria's major gateway, welcomes about 10 million passengers per year. That's from 2019 records. Three other airports in Abuja, Port Harcourt, and Kano add up to the number. The Big Four are also a part of the 22 public airports that dot the Nigerian landscape and are operated by the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria. There are also five new terminals built in Lagos, Abuja, Port Harcourt, Kado and Enugu that benefited from the 2013 $500 million loan deal between Nigeria and China. Port Harcourt and Abuja terminals have been open since 2018 while the Lagos Airport Terminal 2 was open in March 2022. Vision is foresight with inside based on hindsight. To continually improve airport infrastructure, this meeting in Abuja seeks to examine the multi layered approaches that can be adopted to change the face of travel experience. If we are desirous of attaining the status of a major player in the global aviation sphere, this is the time to reposition and move the industry forward. The focus is on Nigeria, air transport, tourism. Hospitality industry for economic growth cannot be overemphasized. And that's why today, if you look at the Eiffel Tower in Tori, the London Bridge, the Dubai Mall, Burj Khalifa, all these attractions have all been consciously developed into major tourist attractions that drive passenger traffic to these destinations. And by implication, they attract businesses and generate employment for the locals and the foreigners alike. The Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria, FAN, is, ma is maximizing the contribution to the socio-economic development of Nigeria through increased tourism, trade, and inflow of foreign di direct investments, focusing on the growth of agro-allied and improved economy processing zones to the designated airports. The Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria is changing its business model for a self-sustaining framework through increased private sector participation, thereby reducing the financial burden of the government. Fund's key initiative in promoting investment at the airports is partnering with the state government and private sector to focus on safety, security, infrastructural development, growing domestic airlines through the route development and designation of airports to improve performance and revenue creation. Beyond the fan-operated airports, there are several private terminals which include the Jigawa State Airport, the Makodi Air Force Base in Benue State, the Wari Airport in Delta State which serves the oil industry, and the Uyo Airport in Akwaibom State. Beyond the conference in Abuja, the airport authority also appears to be putting its mouth where its money is. And at this meeting in Lagos, top management staff are gathered to meet with business leaders from the Miami-Dade County in the United States who are seeking to partner in the area of aviation and tourism. And um, I'm sure it's going to be a good day. The airport authority believes collaborations are central to its business and it's open to new avenues for expansion and not depending mainly on aeronautical sources of revenue. FAN has in a number of ways explored non-aeronautical modes of revenue generation and is consistently seeking new avenues for expansion or instead of depending mainly on aeronautical sources of revenue. It is on this premise that we are in this gathering and explored prospects of expansions 
as well as seek ways of collaboration in the course of this business, meeting with our delegates from Miami Dade County. With the intention to build stronger business bonds, the Miami Dade Airport Department believes business between the county and Nigeria will have a great impact. It also wants a direct connection between Nigeria and Miami Dade, as its airport is a direct link to Latin America and the Caribbean markets. We want to explore ways to boost tourism, aviation, and maritime services between Nigeria and Miami Dade County, and also to engage with both the private and public sectors to force closer bilateral relations. And Nigeria is an important U.S. security partners and partner in Africa. Then the presentation follows. We've become the number one international passenger uh, airport in the United States. Normally we were in the top 10, sometimes 11, sometimes 13. We are far busier than JFK, LAX, um, and a lot of people are coming in there. As you'll see, we are the largest and best served gateway to Latin America and the Caribbean. So last year, we handled about 37.3 million passengers, which is about 75% capacity to pre-COVID. This year, we are slated to be closer to 50 million. And several questions are asked. From Nigeria, do we presently have cargo that move into Miami? And if we do, what, what percentage is it compared to the ones that, the ones that are coming? But if we don't, what kind of cargo do you expect in the future for us? In the spirit of uh, cooperation and collaboration, uh, I think um, uh, Miami should be looking at Anambra Airport. The U.S. team also does well to answer. Why do we have to come here? We're number one in the entire United States. But just like McDonald's, just like Coca-Cola, just like Microsoft, they're ahead of the curve, you know, in promoting themselves. So we don't wait for the competition to come in and we try working against the competition. We want the competition to work against us because we're already ahead of the competition. When the meeting is over, both parties are optimistic that the business relationship will help grow facilities and passengers while expanding tourism and air transport. On the interview segment, we take excerpts from the Minister of Aviation had his historical speech at the Fan Airport Conference. Well, as of the last count, we have about 43 airports. Of course, some are airstrips. Um, but so long as it's a landing and taking a point well designed for the purpose of aviation, be it military or civil, we consider it as an airport. Some of them are private and some of them are owned by state governments, but the majority of them are owned by federal government. And those from the states are also being taken over by federal government, the likes of airports like KB, like Duse, like uh, Bauchi almost, and perhaps Gombe and the rest of them, and for very good reasons. People have been questioning why should federal government be taking over airports, or state-owned airports. Well, it's government to government. We are convinced that it's the right way to go. However, it will eventually turn into the private sector, because the roadmap being implemented by this government is such that every single airport will be owned and run by the private sector for more efficiency and of course value for money. 2015 to date, aviation has grown. The first four years saw the increase in passenger numbers from 8 to 18 million and aviation became the fastest growing sector of the Nigerian economy before COVID. Even with COVID, aviation is now the third fastest growing sector of the Nigerian economy. There's also a reason for that. Like we said in the past, our population of 215 million people, our geographic location, are all factors that are added to this. But of course, we must note here that this industry of civil aviation is not very different from other locations. 
It's just that we're endowed by God. Our four airports for now have been designated and approved as free zones for all of you to come and invest. Particularly in Abuja, we have 12,000 hectares of land, all available as free zone in this federal capital territory. The ease of doing business in Nigeria ranking has risen, and it's possible for you to own 100% of a company in Nigeria as a foreigner. So whether you're a foreigner or you're a Nigerian, we want to assure you that aviation sector is a place where you can put your money and you will not lose. Our doors as a government are open to provide a level playing field for competition and innovation. We're always willing and ready to discuss business and partner with innovators and investors to bring the desired growth and development of the industry. I therefore employ well-meaning Nigerians and foreigners to come on board, align with the roadmap, and take advantage of these business opportunities with limitless potentials for huge returns on investments. That it is on purpose that we chose to do a public-private partnership arrangement in, on these roadmap items so that the people will now own it. We also strongly believe that government has no business in business as the saying goes. Aviation This Week with 73-year-old Mohamed Malhas fulfilling his dream of flying planes after building a flight simulator in his basement to practice his passion every day. He spent four years building a cockpit in his basement. كمنتدى لهواة الطيران هذا البيت يعني هذا المكان هو زي مطار في منطقة البيت اللي أنا موجود فيها لما نيجي لهون بحس حالي أنا نازل رايح على مطار بدي أقلع وأذهب إلى أحد البلدان الأخرى بطلب من زوجتي مرات يجي تشاركني في الطيران إلا أنها تطلب أنه ينختم جوازها حتى تسافر حقيقة نحن الآن في مرحلة الهبوط والاستعداد للهبوط في مطار ماريسون now to the Red Eagle Aerobatic Team from the Aviation University of the PLA Air Force practice of their jaw-dropping aerobatic stunts before the 13th China International Aviation and Aerospace Exhibition, which is ongoing in South China's Guangdong province. During the air show, the Red Eagle team will present the artistic appealing ballet in the air when performing the highly difficult movements they have to withstand the test by the extreme. Not every person has a chance to pilot an airplane, especially at such a high-level air show. Only the camera provides viewers with the first-hand pictures of the performance. According to one of the pilots of the Red Eagle team, the flying speed reached some 600 kilometers per hour when performing the aerobatic movements. That poses great challenges to the pilot's ability to drive the aircraft stably. Pilots need to face their extreme physical limits while at the same time performing a sequence of exhilarating aerobatic figures. The plane looks flying stably when viewed from outside. In fact, the joystick was clicking fast to adjust the distance of the interval. When the airplane is doing the somersaults, it requires a bigger payload, usually five, and the pilot's face may be deformed. Or another difficulty is to emit the dazzling colorful smoke trails. That the 32-minute performance has made the pilot sweaty with hands becoming rigid. Aviation This Week returns. IATA 78 AGM focuses on manpower development and how much block funds are in Nigeria. Do join us again. Top executives of the International Air Transport Association at a press conference 
as the global airline body holds its 78th annual general meeting. The issue of manpower is on the front burner. There will uh, be a, a disconnect between what they wanted to offer and their uh, manpower or the uh, manpower at the airport. They are adjusting their schedule. So I'm confident that these issues will be addressed uh, and clearly we would prefer not to see uh, industrial action disrupting the operations of airports um, and putting uh, our customers' uh, travel plans at risk again. For Qatar Airways Chief Executive Akbar al Bakr, labour shortages at airports around the world will be a big challenge in the coming months. But his airline is inundated with job applications. We don't see any labour shortage uh, in our company. Uh, in our region, I think. Uh, I, don't, I don't see, I, I, I of course cannot talk to you about uh, other airlines, but I know that uh, uh, as far as Qatar Airways is concerned, uh, we actually are inundated with applications wanting to join the, the airline. Uh, just give you an example, we are in need of around 900 additional pilots uh, because uh, of our growth plan. Uh, we had 20,000 applications. Meanwhile, JetBlue Airways boss says he's confident that the aviation world will get back to a new normal over time. You know, I think the, the good news is this is something that um, we identified a few years ago and there are a lot of efforts underway to uh, improve the pilot, pilot hiring uh, supply um, and you know, I'm confident that, as Willie said, that over the next uh, two or three years, um, uh, we'll get back to a, a, a new normal. For Al Bakr, the industry's net zero 2050 target, which was set last year, may be, also think, be difficult uh, for airlines to achieve, uh, while summer travel in Europe is seeing a pent up demand. There is uh, no handling, enough handling facilities available at the airports. If you really look at uh, uh, our departures uh, out of uh, airports in the US, in, in Europe, taking massive delays because of shortage of uh, staff to, to handle our aircraft. This will be, I think, uh, a very big challenge uh, uh, in the coming, uh, coming months. I hope that this could be resolved somehow. There is still a lot of pent-up of pent demand that can't travel this summer because there is just not enough capacity in the system. So we still have a lot of customers, for example, who have not flown since COVID but are ready to fly. They're saying they're willing to fly, but they just you know, they, they just haven't done that yet. So that will continue and that I think will provide a tailwind into 23. I think the other thing we have to remember is business travel is still ramping up. But, you know, business travel is coming back. We're seeing it um, even in an environment where there may be some, con you know, concern about impact of recession. Business travel in Q4 this year is going to be a hell of a lot better than business travel in Q4 last year and so there's a significant amount of momentum still. The, the evidence that we have today suggests that we will still have a disconnect between supply and demand going into the fourth quarter and even potentially into the first quarter uh, as airlines and airports rebuild for the strong recovery that we're seeing. Meanwhile, the International Air Transport Association is concerned over the decision by Nigeria to block foreign airlines from repatriating ticket sales revenue running to $450 million into their respective countries. IATA's Regional Vice President, Africa and Middle East, Kamil Al Alawadi, said the federal government's decision was unacceptable, adding that the development could have a negative effect on the country's aviation industry. The amount of foreign airlines blocked funds in Nigeria estimated at $208 million in the third quarter of last year has risen to $283 million in the first quarter of this year. Around 30 flights carrying up to 5,000 passengers have been cancelled at Heathrow Airport due to technical issues affecting baggage. The airport asked airlines to cut 10% of flights from shuttles across terminals 2 and 3 earlier this week. It comes after problems at baggage reclaim areas, with images of luggage being piled up high emerging last week. Elsewhere, EasyJet announced plans to cut 7% of its 160,000 flights scheduled between July and September. The move came after Gatwick, EasyJet's main airport, 
said it will reduce the number of flights taken off from its airport during the peak summer season because of staff shortages. Tens of thousands of passengers have been hit by airport disruptions and flight cancellations in recent weeks. Drop off, checking in, going through the security checkpoint, boarding. This course of a traveler can often lead to stress and worry. A largely amplified phenomenon for travelers with disabilities who struggle to move around and find their bearing in such huge places. Millions of people pass through airports every year. But how is accessibility for persons with disabilities deployed within airports? That's what the Coalition of Disability Organizations, CODO, seeks to address with its research. Lead researcher, Professor Omolulu Yombo, a professor of sociology from the University of Lagos, breaks down some areas of the report tagged Accessibility of Nigerian Airports to Persons with Disabilities. It's uh, something that can help to raise awareness about the plight of PWDs. This was based on uh, empirical studies, so we know exactly what the issues are, what is on the ground. For the PWDs on their own, I think it's also good that they know that some attention is being given to their uh, issues of their concern. And then uh, for some of the airline operators, the airport authority and other agencies, uh, a good thing is that recommendations have been made also for more training. It's not that people are doing it deliberately perhaps, but we believe that if people are trained, then they will, uh, their performance will be better. And Some of the challenges encountered by persons with disabilities at the airports include difficulty in climbing the stairs to the air side, difficulty in boarding the aircraft, communication barriers due to absence of sign language, poor assistance by airport and airline staff, absence of dedicated seats for disabled persons, absence of dedicated seats for persons with disabilities, and absence of disability desks at the airports, among others. The advocacy project is hinged on the provisions of the Act prohibiting discrimination against persons with disabilities, which was signed into law in 2018. Important to show that even an average person with disability do not understand what access means. So for the fact that the person even entered the plane, you said to God be the glory. In fact, this thing is very good. He doesn't even know because he's used to suffering. He's used to shredded, he's used to discrimination. That for the fact that he even entered the plane is a testimony. So the pain and agony he took to enter the plane it doesn't matter. When the presentation is over, some of those present suggest that there should be necessary facilities. I remember I and Waid, because we traveled together, we had to confront them. Like the way we confronted them, they knew that we understood what we were saying. The guy that was doing the boarding pass or whatever had to remove his seat and give me to sit down because I was angry. I was asking why I would have to walk that distance and by the counter, you just put a wheelchair for me. What is the essence of that wheelchair? We are now in the digital world. It's not for me now to now book a Virgin Airline. When I now get to Virgin Airline, they now start telling me that there is no way because you're on a wheelchair. There is no way you're getting... No, I'll feel discouraged and I'll not want to travel next time again. But I think if there is something like that, it should be more easy in every website of every airline. Let there be they are, how disability friendly they are. So it will really help us. The next phase of the project is to engage the airlines, ground handlers, and other stakeholders in the aviation industry with a view to finding solutions to some of the issues raised. This is our final destination on the program. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Bukala Joe Okitumbi. See you next time.